Welcome everyone to ITD Gaming Appetizers. Tonight, NVIDIA says, are you ready for the future? You can throw that old ray tracing in the garbage. We have path tracing for you. What the hell is path tracing, might you ask? Well, if you, if you understand any of the terms ray tracing and rasterization, then you understand what this is. But for those who don't, ray tracing... Path tracing and rasterization are all kind of the same concepts. Rasterization is basically a single viewpoint of the way that light hits a surface, right? That's what we used to all call and all drool over the way that video games were trying to render an image was basically we rasterize the image so it has real life light. The sun's right here and it's beaming down on an object, you know, or the light's hitting that object. We were like, this is cool. What do we do? We improved upon it and said, we have an even better way. We're going to call it ray tracing. How light interacts with the palm of my hand, that's it. They just stopped there. They didn't care about diffusion of light or anything. They just said, hey, we can show realistic shadows no matter what way you look in my hand by the way the light hit it. So video games were trying to get through that realism of the way that light now hits and hits another item. So they have taken it one step further and calling it path tracing. So now they think of light. More is just hitting that object, but more of hitting that item and diffusing into the other items around it. NVIDIA is basically saying that this is the future, which kind of sounds like it to me, right? Ray tracing is basically single point of origin to other point of origin, so a line, whereas path tracing does more of a job of that one light beam hitting something and going off into other directions. Um, so they're calling this real-time path tracing. Uh, so NVIDIA is banking on this technology, taking over and replacing um, ray tracing. So that's going to be the new buzzword for 2023 and beyond. Forget about ray tracing. We have path tracing, you know, uh, I, from what I understand is it's going to play a big part in their 40 series cards that are going to be coming out soon. Um, so they had a they have a, they have somewhat a very convoluted. Um, how do I say this? A very convoluted description of it on their website, on their blog. Uh, so if you want to understand um, ray tracing and all that stuff, don't go to NVIDIA because NVIDIA is going to sensationalize the hell out of this. Just go Google anything. Do ray tracing versus path tracing or even rasterization versus ray tracing. You're going to get a better understanding of it than what NVIDIA is going to try to tell you because they're the guys selling the snake oil in the back telling you that it cures everything from warts to boils and you know smelly underarm pits when really you just need a simple understanding of it's just the light way that light travels, really. Just think of it in that aspect, you know. Rasterization is single viewpoint. You know, ray tracing allows you to understand the different points of where a light hits an object so you can see shadows and all kinds of cool things like that. And then this new one is going to be, think of it as multipath. Ray tracing, single path. Path tracing, multiple paths of light. So just think of it kind of like that. But NVIDIA is banking on it. And from what I understand, it's going to be the wave of the future. Nick, what do you think about path tracing? I can't ready. I can't wait to ride the wave. <laughs> um, I mean, come on, Nvidia. I was just getting used to ray tracing. You know, I mean, I we barely have games that run it, and the games that do run it, I usually turn it off because I like performance mode better. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> even though I like ray tracing, it looks really cool, but. I like my games running at 60 frames per second, not 30 with ray tracing on. So, yeah, I mean, this is cool. Sure. I mean, the, the concept's cool. I don't know why they have to have a new name. What can they just call it like Ray Tracing 2.0 or something like that? But whatever. They like their names. They like their naming schemes. So path tracing. This the the, the They did have a, a, a tech demo with a, a tiger in the jungle that showed off um, this path tracing. So you can go check that out. It looks really cool. Um, it's a cool idea and a cool concept and I like it. You know, I like the fact that it's a ray tracing 2.0, right? It's a, it's an advanced version of ray tracing, an advanced concept, um, taking ray tracing one step further. Right. Um, except for like, you know, they're going to go into their 400 or series or 4,000 or 40 series or four series or whatever of, of their graphics cards. That's great. No one's going to be able to get a hold of them except for scammers and people with a lot of money because graphics cards from NVIDIA, which are usually the best cards out there, are also the most expensive cards out there. So good luck getting one of these cards and the machine to be able to run it. I mean, PCs still have a hard time now unless you have a bleeding edge or high end PC. I still have a, a trouble now running ray tracing, let alone, you know, anything else. So 
Um, I'm just wondering how path tracing is going to take a hit to the uh, game uh, PC, gaming PC or console when it's trying to do that. Because even consoles now can't really handle ray tracing all that well, right? Um, and, you know, I, did they, I don't know if you saw, but I didn't see anything about path tracing being a more like... Uh, better for performance or any sort of performance improvements i would assume it would not have performance improvements but um i figured it'd be more of a daunting task for the gpu to handle taking the light from an object and dispersing it out um, in multiple directions than what ray tracing is even doing now so <clears throat> this is a cool concept but i think ray tracing will probably stick around for a while because right now that is the buzzword and we're finally getting it it's kind of like it's kind of like TV manufacturers announcing 8K TVs when we're now able to afford 4K TVs, right? I mean, 4K has been affordable for a while now, but, you know, in larger sizes now, 4Ks are affordable, right? You can buy a 65-inch, 75-inch 4K for not too bad a price compared to what they were. So, you know, people aren't ready for the 8Ks, even though they're out there, but they're expensive. Um, there are some cheaper 8Ks, but you know, not a lot of things use them. And I feel like the same way with this, right? Um, developers and stuff like that are start, finally starting to utilize and, and PCs, you know, those with uh, high-end desktops are finally getting the cards and various uh, chipsets and various things like that in their PCs to be able to play a game and enable ray tracing at the same time, where I feel like, you know, I feel like path tracing is quite a ways off. You know, it sounds cool. They do have tech demos with it. It is going to be a part of their next cards, but I mean, it's not just the card, right? We have the the CPU and and um, the VME uh, SSDs that that are in there that need to be able to, and the RAM and various things like that uh, components of the of a computer that need to be able to perform this function, right? Um, I'm assuming not just the GPU is going to handle everything with it. So it's just going to be one of those things where um, it sounds like a cool concept and I'm sure they'll have it, but how many of these games will take, you know, will take off with that, that type of technology until later down the line when it becomes more mainstream, right? Ray tracing. I feel like for me, I know ray tracing has been around for quite a while if you think about it, but I mean, for me, it feels like the concept is still new and still being introduced into the gaming atmosphere. So while path tracing sounds cool, you know, maybe cool your jets a little bit, NVIDIA. Let's get ray tracing off the ground and where every game is ray traced uh, and it can run at 60 frames per second. Then we can talk about path tracing and kind of advance the line from that point. What do you think, Pat? Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, that, you know, it's really hard for people to visualize. I mean, it's really hard to really you have to think about how are they they're basically faking physics in video games right it's not like a movie where i can shine a light on an object and you can move around it in real time and see the shadows and the perspective change it's really much more difficult for games to do that because they basically are are trying to limit the um they're trying to produce as much uh cinematic scenery as they can without degradating performance like you know degrading performance as nick said i mean because at some point you could just run away with it, right? At some point, you can say, this light bounces 100 times off of these 50 objects in the room. And at that point, your video card just coughs up a hairball and rolls over and dies. You know, I mean, it's it's at some point you have to understand that technology is limited, but, you know, that we're limited somewhat by technology in this aspect. We just can't run this type of stuff. It's not we're all going to go back to the days of the old cinematic video game. You remember like <laughs> the, the, the weird Fahrenheit video games and stuff that were all just cinematic scenes, you know, you're still picture. And then you start talking with the choice you picked and there's acting and dialogue and stuff. And it's, and I understand where that concept is coming from. I mean, you know, hardware ray tracing, you know, is, is been around for a little while. I think like, Nvidia, Nvidia didn't invent this technology or anything like that, but they, um, they're perfecting it and increasing the number of rays per second and things like that, you know. And 
And now they're trying to figure out a way, how do we get to real-time path tracing? So instead of it just calling it real-time ray tracing, we're going to talk about, because instead it's not a ray anymore. It's not a single point to a single point. It's now a single point that hits an item and diffuses out. You know, so it's it's a, it's a weird concept that they're pushing, that they want this technology. But as a video card manufacturer, GPU manufacturer, they have to push the limits of their cards, right? Or else what's the point? Why are people going to buy the 4,000 series or the 5,000 or in a few years, the 9,000 series? And then whatever they decide to do, are they going to go back to the three-digit series cards or the two-digit? Who knows what they're going to do? But, you know, whatever the gist is, they have to push that technology. We are very far away from seeing games use this technology because, as Nick pointed out, there are games and hardware that struggle to run really high-quality ray tracing at 30 frames per second right now. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that, you know, that, that that take into effect, like how many times can I allow the light to bounce? You know, how many objects can I allow the light to bounce off before I'm just saturating the scene and destroying my performance? I mean, as much as I say, I'm a graphic snob, I'll be the first to admit that I turn on the quality mode in most games to check it out for about 10 minutes. And I'm like, okay, cool. This thing's running like a slug. I'm back on to performance mode. You know, because at the most at that point, my eyes aren't pulling out all the cool little details. It's more like focused on the gameplay and I get tunnel vision. But I do like to look at that for that five to 15, 30 minutes or whatever depends on the game. Right. A very high action game. I'm more focused to do performance, but a very visual stylized pretty game. I'm looking to run that in visual quality mode uh, just because I want the performance. I don't want to run a 30 frame per second slog fest and whatever i'm you know running through a hot tub of freaking molasses just so it's just it's technology advancing it's what what they do right um the technology behind it sounds pretty cool that whole video that nick was talking about with the tiger force i think they had something like three billion light angles and 30 bounces per path and uh, just it's insane what they were doing in this, but how would that play in a video game is what I want to see. You know, if I'm in an action video game, is that really worthwhile? Do I care that I could see all the hair on the tiger's back when I'm up close to it or whatever they're trying to portray in the light bouncing and running through that tiger's hair? Are you really paying attention to that? It's all cool for the little sizzle reel for the game re that you're recording or whatever, you know, but in reality, we're all trying to get that performance out of any game that we're trying to do. And at this point, that's a pretty thing. You know, it's a it's nice to look at, you know, but it's not helping the performance of our games, unfortunately. So how many times do we have games now that come out that don't have ray tracing day one and they add it as a future patch that you have to enable and it runs like garbage when you enable it uh, because it just runs away, right? They're like, hey, we got so many sources of light. And we have so many rays that we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna track. So at that point, your game's like, you know, it's either not rasterized properly to where there's enough surfaces or anything to bounce things off of, so it just becomes messy. You know, it, there's so many different approaches. Nvidia has been doing this so long; they're experts at this. They know what they're doing. They're just trying to prove their worth as hardware and push the boundaries of what their hardware can do and try to get game developers to pick up on this new technology. You know, ray tracing is something that's done on TVs and, you know, and stuff like that because that's realistic light, right? They're not faking that simulated light. There is really a light source bouncing off of that object on a television. In a video game, we have a simulated light source, you know, the light's here and it's bouncing off of everything that it hits and touches. But ray tracing just says, hey, I'm running this light to here to here. So that's your shadow. We're not diffusing it everywhere. So it can be a little bit confusing, but it's going to be the next buzzword for video game, right? In 2023, we're going to hear freaking Witcher now with ray, with now with path tracing. Or they're going to start saying, we're going to start using realistic beam tracing now. <laughs> so they're trying to get to this real-time light tracing or light path tracing, if you will. Um, and it, it will get there eventually. But, I mean, technology has come a long ways in 10 years since we've been playing video games. Just look at... Look at the games we're playing in 2020 versus the games we were playing in 2010 or even go back to 2000 for that matter, or the 90s or even the 80s and look how they much games have progressed. I mean, since I was a kid in the 80s versus me now hitting my 40s, games have changed a lot and they will keep changing and keep getting better. And NVIDIA and um, 
and AMD will keep pushing. Everybody's going to keep pushing their Radeon and NVIDIA will keep pushing the boundaries of what video cards can do. They just got to get buy-ins from the developers. Yeah. And, you know, and those, yeah, they will. They'll keep pushing that technology, you know, and we, you know, there's other developers for other PC components, RAM and, and, and CPUs and stuff like that, you know, especially for like, I guess more in line of like, um, not necessarily PCs, because sure, you could buy the all the bleeding edge stuff if you have enough money. But, you know, for gaming consoles and stuff like that, you know, they have got to find a way to catch up to this type of stuff, too. I mean, we have next gen Xbox and PlayStation, but, you know, like you said, those even those consoles, as powerful as they are, can't handle or at least we haven't seen that they can handle ray tracing and good performance at the same time right um there's still that swapping that we used to have back on the xbox one and, and playstation 4 of swapping between a uh, graphical mode and a performance mode and for me i play on performance mode 90 percent of the time because i like the for me like i love the graphics and the fidelity look but that 60 frames per second you play a game in 60 frames per second you won't want to go back to 30 right and even if you have to ch- ch- turn off like the ray tracing or whatever it is you're like i'd rather it be smooth than just like like you said running through a a pool of molasses you know i mean you put it on quality mode that's nice looking molasses but you're still swamping through it slowly and it just looks horrible so it's like no i'd rather just have that nice smooth performance that 60 frames a second um where it just looks you know better everything's just more responsive right i mean that's really the thing the graphics is one thing but response is another right a game could look really good but if it doesn't respond and doesn't perform well then what's the point of playing it right um if it plays like crap but it looks awesome well you still ain't gonna have a fun time because you can't get the game to perform so you know like i said nvidia and amd they're gonna they're going to keep pushing the limits keep pushing that bleeding edge you know keep it on the edge always always new things and that's true i mean they have to have some new buzzword for the new graphics cards or why do you need to go buy them what what's the purpose of upgrading well now you know why there's a purpose of upgrading path tracing which you won't be able to do so (laughs) your graphics card will but the rest of your pc will probably kill over and die um so (laughs) you won't be able to catch up with what the uh, you know it depends on how it depends on how much the great the gpu is doing right i mean is it doing all of it i mean we still have to have other components i mean it's doing majority of it but it still has to have other components to complement it uh, such as ram and cpu so like what is it going to take for a game you know and and games that utilize this like what are the system requirements going to be for that right it's going to be freaking insane um so if you want that path tracing right now not necessarily if for the minimum specs if you turn all that crap off it's going to be fine but if you want all that those those nice fancy features and buzzwords to be added to your game then you know it's going to be it because even now ray tracing is still a tough it's not a tough sell i should say but it's a it's a tough thing to get working for most people um and working with, with performance in line with it right Sure, you could turn on ray tracing, but the game runs at 10 frames a second, right? Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll just see. We'll see how this gets implemented. You know, maybe they have a new way. I couldn't think of anything that would be more performance. I would consider this to be more performance heavy than ray tracing, but maybe there's NVIDIA hasn't talked about maybe a way that this path, how this path tracing works that uses less performance. Uh, I don't see how on the way that's working but who knows i mean that's what they need to work on too i think yeah so there's supposed to be ways of making it work smarter and not harder because that's what we don't want right we don't want the gpu to work harder we want it to work smarter and there's a whole bunch of talk around uh nvidia's denoising technology to make things a little bit smoother and to you know because basically you have to take into consideration like number of light sources versus how many um geometric shapes are in there you know triangles is pretty typical uh terminology used for sources or position and then how many paths paths of bounce are you allowed to have for the light and things like that so could you imagine a scene that has like 30 light references or you know let's do something simplistic let's talk about being out in the open world where you have one light path source but you have it going through like leaves and bouncing off of objects around you and you're in the forest and you know uh, you know that's probably the most simplistic 
of a of a light source that you can get, right? It's a single source, but it's coming through and diffusing and bouncing off of other objects. And how many geometric shapes does it take to create that environment versus how many emissives and things like that that you have within the environment? And then just take more of like a um, a scene where you're in an underground bunker and there's like 30 light sources, you know, there's like a whole ceiling of lights, there's lights on the walls and things like that. And you've just added a whole nother level of complexity into that environment. There's just too many things to think about. Um, but, you know, NVIDIA sees a future in this and they are, you know, it's pretty much the top and game, the top. There's only two of them. Yeah, there's Radeon and NVIDIA, right? Those are your big dogs in the video cards for, for gaming. I'm going to make that clear for gaming. I'm not talking about video editing and, and other cards like that because that's outside the realm of my knowledge. Uh, you know, I know there's cards out there for rendering and and um, and 3D, you know, 3D rendering and things like that. But this is, I'm talking about video games. Those are your two big, big hitters in the market. And if one of them is saying, we're pushing this technology, I bet you the other one's got something else under their hood that's just as close or that they're buying into uh, to help push along. So these guys know what they're talking about, and they're going to be the ones to run the show and try to get developers on board. If it's too much of a hog and video games don't adopt it, it will die. And they're going to have to say, well, path tracing didn't work. We're going to rebrand this as ray tracing 3.0, as Nick says, you know. So, you know, yeah, it exactly. is what it is. It's way down the future. Who knows when we'll see this technology even used in a game and we'll be back to, as Shane likes to say, chunky butter before we realize it. So, Nick, you got anything else on this topic before we put it to bed? Uh, we need to get some of that real life light tracing in on, the, on our cinematic uh, show here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. No, uh, I'm excited to see games utilize that. I want to see what it looks like. You know, ray tracing looked cool. So let's see what the path tracing looks like. Besides the tech demo. All right. Well, I, I will tell you, hold your breath. We'll get there. <laughs> All right. Well, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about path tracing. Is it the wave of the future? It's supposed to be real close to real time as we can get to this time. And, and so let us know what you think. Um, do you care? Are you a performance or a quality guy when you play video games? There's always two schools of thought. Even though I'm a graphics snob, I'm still a performance guy because at some point graphics just don't play very well. They look pretty, but they don't play well. Nick is a performance guy, and I'm pretty sure Shane, the other half, he's always a performance guy as well. He doesn't even give the quality a, sh a shake. He's just like, yep, oh, cool. Yep, moving on. So let us know what you are. Do you like one of those or the other, or could you care less? You just want your video game to play well. So let us know what you think uh, down in the comments. And don't forget, as always, make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video. And if you're not subscribed yet, what are you doing? Hit that button. Subscribe to us. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode, and we hope to catch you in the next one. See you later. 